Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and application. So today we are going to introduce the concept of uh, similar matrices that how we can define two matrices that are similar. So let us do that. So today we are going to discuss that suppose I have a uh, transformation T from Rn to Rn. So this is I am talking about the same space to the same space. Now suppose suppose I have a uh, so first I want to see that how we can write the uh, coordinates of a vector corresponding to different different bases. For example, so let us uh, write down first I will take change of basis. can be a basis or maybe suppose that I take R2. In the R2 suppose I have basis B1 that is given to me. So, I just take the very simple basis. So, let us take it is 1 0 and 1 1. So, this is the basis I am taking. So, let us call it u 1 and call it u 2. Now, I take the another basis b 2. Suppose I take 1 minus 1 and 0 1 and I call this basis as v 1 and v 2. Now, we want to see that for any vector, for any vector uh, maybe a b belongs to R 2. So, for any vector I just choose any vector a b from R 2, then, then how the coordinates of a b then how the coordinates of a b are related. So, this one we want to discuss because I can write the coordinates of so let us uh, this vector a b. So, I just take this vector as a column vector and I will write its coordinate with respect to B 1. I will write the coordinates of same vector with respect to the basis B 2 and I want to find what is the relation between these two. So, this is the relation I want to find. So, let us do this one. Now, so let us so, from here, so let I call this vector as a vector x. So, this vector is a b. And that belongs to R 2. Now, from here I know that the vector x belongs to the basis b 1. This one I want to write. So, suppose this is equal to maybe alpha and beta. From here I can write that I can write from here. So, x is my a b. So, my a b b 1 is equal to alpha beta which implies that my vector a b this is my vector is equal to alpha times. So, this is the basis I am taking. So, u 1 this will equal to u 1 plus beta times 
u 2 because this is what I am writing. And from here I can write from here that I take the matrix made up of u 1 the first uh, vector of the basis and u 2 the second vector of the basis. And here I can write alpha beta. So, now from here I can say that so this is my matrix corresponding to the basis B 1. Okay, so, I can from here I can write that u 1 u 2 alpha beta that is equal to a b and a b is my x. So, let us call this matrix. So, I just have taken the basis b 1. So, I just call this matrix may be c 1. So, c 1 is the matrix made up of the basis and from here one thing I know that this matrix C is invertible and is called change of basis matrix. So, this is called the change of basis matrix C. So, from here I can write these are the C 1 and this is alpha beta. So, this is x with respect to the basis B 1 I can write it as a B 1 and that is equal to x. And from here I can write that B 1 is equal to C 1 inverse x. So, this is very easily we can write the basis the coordinate of the x with respect to the basis that is equal to the inverse of the matrix made up of basis into the element we are talking about. Similarly, we can write x of so, here I have taken the two bases B 1 and B 2. So, now I want to write with respect to basis B 2 of the same element. So, this one I can write with the matrix. So, from here I can write that similarly I, I will make a matrix C 2 which, which is a made up of the vectors V 1 and V 2 as a column vector. So, I call it V 1 and V 2 this is the column I have taken. So, this is also uh, invertible and from here we can write that C 2 the coordinates of x with respect to the basis B 2 that is equal to x. And now from here I can write that B 2 is C 2 inverse so, this is the we are able to write like this one. Now, from here, now from here I can write. So, I will so I can call it equation number 1 and equation number 2. So, from 1 and 2, what I can write? I can write as x b 1 it can be written as c 1 inverse x and this one can be written as c 1 inverse and x is like this one. So, from here I can write as c 2 b 2. So, that gives me that the coordinate of x with respect to b 1 directly can be written as C 1 inverse C 2 with respect to B 2 or so this is the relation between the coordinates of the vector x with respect to basis B 1 and with respect to basis B 2 or I can write 
B 2 is equal to C 2 inverse and x I can write from here C 1 B 1. So, this is the relation between the coordinates of the same vector with respect to different different basis. So, let us uh, verify uh, this one. Now, let us verify. So, I take a element. So, let us let us choose a element, choose a vector x. So, I just choose the vector x as 3, 2. So, let us choose this one and I have the basis this one. Now, first I have to make the matrix C 1. So, C 1 is made up of this vector u 1, u 2. So, this is u 1, u 2 and this is what we are going to write here is 1 0 1 1. So, it is 1 0 1 1. So, this is my matrix C 1. Now, I want to write. So, from here what I want to do? I want to write the. So, from here I know that C 1 and x with respect to the basis B 1 that is equal to x. Now, I want to find out what is the value of this one, the coordinate of this one and from here I want to find B 1 that is C 1 inverse x. Now, C 1 inverse will be the determinant is 1 here. So, it will be swap and this will be change of sign. So, this is my C 1 inverse. So, I can write from here it is 1 minus 1 0 1 and x is 3 2. So, from here 3 minus 2 1 and it is 3 and 2. So, it is 1 2. So, now this is we are able to find. Also, I want to write C 2. So, C 2 I am writing with respect to the basis v 1 and v 2. So, C 2 is basically v 1 and v 2. So, that is equal to uh, the first one is 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 0, 1. And now, my x with respect to b 2 is C 2 inverse x. Now, I can find my C 2 inverse. So, this is 1. So, uh, the determinant is 1 and then it is swapping and negative sign. So, it is 1 0. So, from here I can write that this is 1 0 1 1 and this is my 3 2. So, if you multiply this by so, it will be 3 and this will be 5. So, it is 1 is 3 5 and another is 1 2. So, this is the coordinates we are able to find. Now, we also know that with respect to. So, this one we want to find. So, let us uh, verify e either of this one. So, maybe I can verify this one. So, x with respect to b 2, this is equal to c 2 inverse c 1, c 2 inverse c 1 and then b 1. So, let us do this one. So, C 2 inverse is this 1 0 1 1 and C 1 is 1 1 0 1 and x with respect to B 1 is 1 2. So, let us see what is going to happen. 
Now, from here I can write as 1 0 1 1 and this one I multiply here. So, it is 1 plus 2 3 and this is 2 and now it is multiplied here. So, it is 3 and then it is 5 and from here also we have confirmed that this is my 3 5 and this is also coming 3 5. So, that is equal to x of b 2. So, this way we are able to find the relation between the coordinates of the same vector with respect to different basis. Because once we are able to find the basis of one vector, uh, coordinate of one vector with respect to one basis then the coordinate of the same vector with another basis we can apply this formula and directly we can write that. So, this is the relation between the change of basis matrix or the coordinate of the vector with respect to different basis. So, after this one we are going to introduce a very important concept. Now, suppose I have a transformation T from R n to R n and then we have the basis B 1. So, this is basis suppose B the basis given to me that is u 1, u 2, u 3, u n. So, now we have the transformation from R n to R n, then from here one thing is clear that the transformation matrix matrix will be square. So, we, now we are talking about the square matrices. Now, from here I know that if I take any x apply my T the transformation. So, what I do is that if I write the transformation and if I put the square around this it means I am talking about the matrix corresponding matrix A. Now, from here I will get T x that is equal to A x. So, this is corresponding to the standard basis. Now, let we take a matrix C which is made up of u 1, u 2, u n. So, I put the first column as u 1, second column as u 2. So, this is the matrix and I know that C is invertible. This we know that this is a linearly independent. So, it is invertible square matrix. Now, from here I apply my C inverse to this x and I get the coordinate of this x with respect to the C. So, C is a uh, change of basis matrix So, I apply this one and I will get the coordinate of the same x with respect to the basis B the same thing I apply here C inverse and I get from here the coordinate of T x with respect to B and that can be written as again A x with respect to B. Now, from here I know that I can go directly from here by writing. So, now I am applying this one. So, I can apply my transformation T the matrix with respect to basis and this is the matrix we have uh, previously we have represented by D. Let me check that how we have written 
So, here, here I am uh, writing with the C, the C matrix. So, let us check that one. Okay. So, because there also I am writing by C, so I should, but here I am writing with the this matrix C. So, let us say write it D. So, now from here I can write that the T I am applying on B that is equal to T x this one. So, this is what we are writing. So, this is the matrix D corresponding to the change of basis that we have done before and we have represented by C. So, let us say uh, no problem because C I am writing here. So, let us uh, write this D. So, this is the way we the transformation is taking place. Now, from here, now I know that T of x b with respect to the basis b. So, this T of x b is equal to D of x b, where D is the corresponding matrix, uh, the matrix uh, corresponding to the basis b. Now, Also, just in the from here we have write, written like this one that coordinate of this one can be written in this form. So, I am using this uh, concept here. Now, this x b I can write as c and this is equal to x, where x is the vector corresponding to the standard basis and from here I can write B is C inverse X. Now, I am using this for concept here. So, now what I am going to do is that. So, now let us see that what is the relation between D and A. So, we want to find we are interested to find the relation between A and D, where my A is the A is the transformation matrix So, this is the transformation matrix of T related to standard basis and D is my transformation matrix of T related to basis B, the new basis I am writing here. And what is C? C is change of basis matrix. So, it is a matrix made up of the basis, whatever the basis it is given. So, now we want to find the relation between these two. Now, so from here, I just write from here that I can write now D of x b. So, this is I am putting the d of x b that is equal to t x that is equal to t x b and what is t x b? It is a vector in terms of b. So, that I can write as a x b and this one I can write a x b I can write as C inverse 
the element a x, the vector a x and this one I can write as c inverse a x. Now, the x I can write from here, I can write c inverse a. So, this x I can write as c b because I know that with respect to basis c this is equal to x. So, from here I am able to write that d of x b is equal to c inverse a c b and this is true for any vector x with respect to the basis. So, it is true for all x belongs to the given space R n. Now, from here I can write that d is equal to c inverse a c because this is true for all x belongs to R n and now from here I can say that d is equal to this and from which I can write that C d is equal to A c and from here I can write that my C d C inverse is equal to A. So, in the both way I can write like this one and now since C is invertible then from here I will write down that which implies that the matrix the matrices A and D are similar because we know that the definition of a similar matrix. So, what is the definition? Uh, I just write the similar matrix. Similar matrices what is the definition suppose i so we are talking about that uh, the square matrix the two matrix matrices a and b so this is of the same order two matrices a and b are said to be similar if there exist if there exist a there exist a non singular matrix p such that p of a is equal to bp or so, from here, so this is the definition of that P of A is equal to B P or P of B is equal to A P, no problem. So, from here I can write that because P is a notable, so I can write from here that A will be equal to B. So, I can maybe I can take inverse, so it will be P inverse B P or from here I can write that p a p inverse that is equal to b. So, this is the definition of the similar matrices. So, if you see from here that now I can say that the matrix a and d are similar and the matrix a is the transformational matrix corresponding to standard basis and d is the transformation matrix corresponding to the new basis. So, that is the relation between these two matrix. Now, I will introduce the uh, concept we have already seen is that diagonalization. of a matrix. So, the, this diagonalization of the matrix we have seen from the matrix theory. 
that suppose I have a matrix A that is n cross n that is given to me. I will be talking about the real matrix. Now, from here A we go to the the matrix. Now, from here I know the concept of eigenvalues. So, this uh, is already we have introduced from the matrix theory from the my previous knowledge that if suppose I have a matrix A and then I have its eigenvalues. So, eigenvalue we generally write by A x is equal to lambda x and from there I will find out the eigenvalue. and from here x this is called the eigenvector. So, that is uh, uh, there then from here if I have a n cross n matrix then suppose, suppose A has eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, to lambda n. So, it can have a n number of eigenvalues and, and suppose uh, I consider that these eigenvalues eigenvalues lambda i's are real. So, that we are considering that suppose this is a real eigenvalue we are not talking about the complex and then we take the corresponding eigenvectors. So, corresponding eigenvector I am writing as, so this is a x. So, I can maybe instead of x I can represent by a u is equal to lambda u because we are writing the vectors maybe in the terms of this one. So, the same thing. eigenvalue and eigenvector. Now, I take the corresponding eigenvectors. So, suppose we are able to write the eigenvectors u uh, 1, u 2, u n and we are able to get this n number of eigenvectors. So, n number of eigenvectors we are able to get and corresponding eigenvectors are this one and are linearly independent. So, I know that if we this eigenvalue are distinct then definitely these eigenvectors will be linearly independent, but since suppose that some eigenvalue is repeating then still we are able to find the vector which are linearly independent. So, that is there. So, now if we, we are able to get the, so I take the basis now be as this vector eigenvectors and number of eigenvector I will get and I take this is a is a set of basis because this is a linear independent any number. So, it is a basis of R n. Now, from here I will write that now so, we know that 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 the matrix A is so in this case is said to be similar to a diagonal matrix we call it D. Then whether the matrix A is said to be similar to the diagonal matrix D, if there exists a non-singular matrix P such that. Now, from here 
you can f write down because by the definition we have written this one that P A is equal to B P. So, from here I will write that A of P is equal to P of D and from here I know that this is equal to I can be written as A can be uh, written as P D P inverse or P inverse A P that is equal to D and this matrix P. So, now from here I should write that the matrix P is made up of this vector as column vector u 1, u 2, u n. So, this is my corresponding invertible matrix we are writing and D is the diagonal matrix and it is made up of the diagonal elements uh, the eigen values at the as a diagonal elements. So, it is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. So, what we have done here is that now we have started with any matrix and then corresponding to this matrix we have calculated the eigen values and the corresponding eigen vectors and from here we are able to get n number of linearly independent eigen vectors. So, I have constructed using this eigen vectors a matrix P which is invertible and then from the concept of similar matrix what we have done here we have showed that this matrix A is similar to the matrix T. So, how I can find the matrix P? So, P is the matrix is made up of eigen vectors. Now, from this uh, we are able to see that this P inverse A P is equal to D. So, from here I can say that this matrix are similar and also similar matrices has similar matrices have same set of eigen values. So, they have a same set of eigen values that is the property of the similar matrix because I am able to write A p is equal to P d. So, A is equal to P d p inverse that is A can be written as equal to P inverse sorry d. So, it is the earlier we have done this concept in my in the course of matrix uh, theory, but there we have not seen that what is the meaning of this A and D in the terms of linear transformation, but now we are able to see that we are writing the same matrix A in the different bases and the bases are coming as the eigenvectors. And then we are able to show that we are able we are finding the new matrix transformation matrix D that is made up of the eigen vectors. So, this way we are able to convert this one and now we can see that the matrix A suppose somebody wants to ask me that what is the value of A 5 then maybe I can uh, define use this formula. So, I can write my P. So, suppose I want to find A square. So, it is P D P inverse and then P D P D P inverse. So, this can be written as P D P inverse P then D P inverse and this is my equal to the identity matrix. So, I can write P and D the diagonal element D square. So, it will be D square P inverse. So, the same way I can write that my A n will be P D raised to power n P inverse. So, by doing this transformation we can easily handle such type of things very easily because I want to find a n just I will write the d raise to power n and that is a diagonal elements or uh, diagonal matrix. 
So, it will be just the rays n to all these eigenvalues and that will be the solution of this form. So, we are generally uh, doing this trans, uh, transformation to make the life simpler to deal with the corresponding uh, the transformation matrix of the linear transformation. So, this is the use, uh, use of the change of basis for the given linear transformation. So, this is a way we are defining this one. So, let me uh, stop here today. So, in this lecture we have discussed a very important concept that is uh, the similar matrices that how the change of basis of the corresponding transformation are used uh, to introduce the two different type of matrices that is uh, we call it the similar matrices and this uh, concept is useful for uh, using uh, for satisfying the other properties of the given matrix or to deal with the properties of the other matrices. So, uh, I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this lecture, uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much. Thank you.